Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars Legends lore video. Before we begin, I do want to take a second to plug a couple of things going on that are important to me. First of all, Corey from Corey Loses and myself just recorded live the first episode of our Star Wars Legends book club style podcast. You can find the first episode on YouTube. It's on the Truths Epicura. If you'd like to join the book club, episode two will be on Rogue Squadron, the first book of the X-Wing series, and we'll be doing that not next Thursday, but the subsequent one, the 13th. Second, I've been putting a lot of focus and effort into my gaming channel, X2. I've been producing a lot of Empire War content, so if you want to check that out, links in the description. Anyway, let's talk about what I believe to be the most controversial aliens in Star Wars Legends, the Yuuzhan Vong. Now, the Vong were a unique race. They came from out of nowhere and ruthlessly assaulted the Star Wars galaxy, killing trillions, pushing all the way to the galactic core, and even taking in Coruscant. That being said, while the biotech used by the Yuuzhan Vong was unique, it certainly wasn't unbeatable. And more than that, the technology of the Vong combined with the species' unique society and methods for waging war actually left them open to some seriously deadly strategies. We'll be covering five for today's video. The first would be a New Republic Scorched Earth policy, or just generally, to make it Star Wars related, a denial of assets. The unique thing about the Yuuzhan Vong is they invaded the Star Wars galaxy and had no territory of their own. They needed fertile planets to establish bases and garrisons for their warriors, and more important, to grow new ships and technology. The Yuuzhan Vong world ships were dying, and they were vulnerable. The Yuuzhan Vong were so desperate to create new ship wombs and weapon facilities that they even colonized Cernpedal, which had been devastated by the Yogan core technique. Other planets included Duro and Coruscant, but the key is early asset denial would have seriously harmed Yuuzhan Vong logistics and could have even crippled the invasion. An all-knowing New Republic, or a competent New Republic after a few weeks, would have retreated when necessary and left planets unusable, whether that's lacing them with mines or toxins or something else. The Vong needed to establish this figurative beachhead, and because the New Republic was so almost innocent during the early stages of the war, even refusing to use techniques like orbital bombardments, the Yuuzhan Vong were able to easily make their way into the galaxy. Stop those first steps, and you stop the invasion from moving forward. Moving on, we have a strategy that the New Republic actually implemented somewhat, but not nearly to the full degree that they should have the use of battle droids and other mechanized combatants. So first of all, the New Republic did invest somewhat in Lando Calrissian's YVH model, and on certain occasions, like the Battle of Ithor, they did use droids. However, it was a really drastically underutilized aspect of warfare. That's because battle droids, even B1s, directly get at two of the Vong's major weaknesses. First off, the Yuuzhan Vong have a severely limited amount of warriors. While they could regrow ships over time, it took a full generation to create a new group of warriors. The New Republic was actually successful in slowing down the Vong incursion because they had superior numbers and were able to outlast a Vong offensive which was overstretched. However, the New Republic should have done a lot more. Alongside the YVH droids, they should have restarted the droid foundries of the CIS. You can create essentially an irreplaceable asset, even if it is low quality, to slowly whittle down your enemy's forces. This works because the Vong can't respond in like. They don't build droids of their own, and especially at the beginning of the war, they don't have the territory for factories. The second element that makes this plan successful is that it takes advantage of the rigid nature of Yuuzhan Vong society and religion. We know that the Vong were driven nearly mad with their hate of machines. Imagine them being attacked by endless hordes of droid starfighters and crappy B1 battle droids. Next up we have number three, and this is another strategy the New Republic came very close to employing on a large scale, and that's the use of bioweapons. Because the Yuuzhan Vong are obviously organic themselves, being living creatures, and they use organic machinery, bioweapons can be used to a devastating effect. The main difficulty is making a weapon which targets only Yuuzhan Vong and Yuuzhan Vong creations, and that's what the creators of the Alpha Red virus struggled with, along with, of course,
course the main deterrent which is the overwhelming moral repugnancy of using a weapon of this class. That being said, imagine a bioweapon which say disrupts the nervous system of Vong warriors and any Vong biot that it touches, or some sort of spreadable flesh eating bacteria. Again, the New Republic did try this with Alpha Red and had it been launched in full, it likely could have ended the war in days. The problem is, again, just the fear of committing mass genocide and the fact that you might leave the galaxy in a significantly worse position than you would fighting and winning a conventional war. Still, when fighting such an existential threat, I think the bioweapon needs to be developed and it needs to be ready for service. Just don't tell the Jedi because they're really, really not going to be cool with it. Bioweapons could actually work nicely with the scorched earth policy. Basically, you abandon a planet, make it look natural but leave it infested with some sort of disease which would hopefully spread to the rest of the fleet. In a prior video, I also talked about how the Flood would absolutely destroy the Yuzhan Vong just because of how it feeds on biomass, and yeah, stuff like that is certainly a gigantic vulnerability. Next up, we have the absolute abuse of the Vong science, religion, and society. So there are a few things we need to touch on here before we continue. First off, the Vong were incredibly limited in their teachings, and they were generally unable to even research new creations, science, etc. So any counter you make to Yuzhan Vong technology will probably be successful throughout the war, and this can generally be tied to the limits of shaping protocols and the various core texts. So this may seem obvious, but the key is to determine any vulnerability that the Vong possess, even if it's one which through some changing would otherwise be fixable. And just generally, Vong society is very rigid from its doctrines, to its caste society, to how it follows its internal rules. Another way the New Republic took advantage of this was by playing into Vong religion, including the role that Jason and Jaina played as essentially mock gods. But I think you can go even further. There are ways to scare a Yuzhan Vong, I think. One would be to borrow some Sai Ru and Tekman technology. So here's one of my dastardly plans. We know that the Yuzhan Vong hate technology, and it's seen as against their religion. A religion, of course, which dictates almost every aspect of society. So, you capture a group of Yuzhan Vong, you use Sai Ru and Tekman technology, basically putting their spirits in a droid body, then you collect a bunch of these and basically drop them on a captured Vong planet. This is fairly cruel, but it's a way of saying if you attack us, your worst nightmare will be done upon you. The Yuzhan Vong are also very, very single minded, especially when it comes to things they find offensive or sacrilegious. Leak the location of the so called factory which is performing these procedures, then once the fleet arrives, hit it with center point station or some sort of bomb. There you go. The battle droid issue sort of plays into this, but generally I think the Vong would respond poorly to an enemy as absolutely brutal as they were. Keep them upset, keep them angry, keep them scared, and they will act predictably. Number five is the use of absolute overwhelming power. And the fact that the New Republic didn't respond properly to the initial stages of the Vong invasion is the single reason the war dragged on for as long as it did. Vong technology was new, it was difficult to counter, but it was certainly beatable. And if you take the entire forces of the New Republic, much less the Empire and the other minor factions, I believe that you easily have enough firepower to stop the Vong in a straight up fight, especially if you can get at them before they've had a chance to restock and refit their ships after the travel through the intergalactic void. And just a reminder, these ships had been traveling essentially through the nothingness of space for perhaps tens of thousands of years. I know I'm really harping on this issue, but the war got away from the New Republic when it was able to spread freely across the Outer Rim. Yes, there will always be the difficulty of embedded agents like No Manor, but had Leia Organa, or a similarly reasonable person, been chief of state during the early stages of the invasion, they literally would have nipped the problem in the bud. The New Republic at this point had hundreds of Star Destroyers, probably thousands of Mon Calamari vessels, and even a few Dreadnoughts. And that says nothing of Centerpoint Station, which they were practically unwilling to use. Just to reiterate though, and you guys can disagree with me, it's my opinion that the New Republic really outgunned
outgun the Vong, at least at their peak, throughout the war. And arguably the Vong would say the same thing, and at one point they even recognized that had the Empire still been in power, the faction would have responded with a proper military reaction and the Vong would have been done for. The problem with the New Republic was that it was far too bureaucratic, far too core-centric, and because of the declared peace with the Empire, perhaps a bit unprepared or unwilling to start and end a new war. I think complacency is not a bad way to put it. So those are the five ways that I think the New Republic could have decimated the Vong and secured a much easier, much quicker win. To summarize, that's the use of scorched earth policy and asset denial, the use of battle droids, the use of overwhelming power or a bioweapon, and taking advantage of the holes created by Yuzhan Vong society and religion. Those however are just my opinions. I would love to hear what you guys think. Let me know that and more down in the comments section. As always guys, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. Thanks for spending 10 minutes with me. I hope you have a great weekend. As always, be safe and may the force be with you.